If I could be the wealthy owner of a large industry, I would say, not for me, I'd rather lead a band. If I could be a politician with the chance to dictate, I would say, let it wait, I'd rather lead a band. Something I've been meaning to ask you it has to do with security. Shoot. We are having a tough time keeping our stuff hidden from the crowds, like our escape equipment, for instance. So we're always looking for new devices. Uh-huh. Looks like you found one. Me? Well, I mean the lieutenant. He hid a time bomb on him, right? He even carried it all the way through prisoner's search, didn't he? Well, where did he hide it? Right in his pocket. The old cigarette match gag. What's that? You take a book of matches, light a cigarette, slip it in. It takes about three minutes for the cigarette to burn down. Then it sets off the matches. Simple. Some time bomb. Ganz einfach. Zigarette? Streichhörsche? Passen Sie ab. Captain Over. One moment for your call from the Mayo Clinic. Uh. Captain Over, white courtesy phone. Captain Clarence Over. I've got it. Thank you. Pete, oh, I heard just a few minutes ago. Why didn't you tell me? No point, Eileen. You'd only try to stop me. Gwyneth, will you marry me? Suppose I say no. You won't. Tell me, Arnold, do you love me? You know I do. Yes, I know you do, and I love you too. Like I love one of my brothers. Captain Over, I have an emergency call for you on line five from a Mr. Ham. All right, give me Ham on five. Hold the mail. You're asking me to sabotage the entire world, three billion people. We may be witnessing the beginning of an era that will mean the complete annihilation of man. Annihilation? The beginning of the end. <laughs> is standing by with an atom bomb. You can't drop an atom bomb on Chicago. Now, I can't read music. That's the truth. What do you mean you can't read music? Okay. A big singing star like you can't read. Don't you think it's what time you learned? No, it's too complicated. I can't walk and chew gum at the same time. <laughs> I, it's, it's no, so Dean, that's complicated. not complicated. No, 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 no. I have my own special method of music instruction. One short lesson, you're going to know everything you need to know about music. <laughs> I can hardly wait, there. <laughs> that theme is your staff. My staff? Well, I can't wait for the Christmas party. <laughs> but these are musical notes. Right, now, look, you see this, Mark? Huh? Well, that's the key signature. That tells you that B over here is flat. <laughs> Thanks for the warning, Pete. <laughs> However, all the others are natural. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Now listen, this is the time signature. That tells us there are four in the bar. Now sometimes there are two in the bar, sometimes three in the bar, sometimes you have to pick up from the bar before. <laughs> you sure do know how to live, I'll tell you that. And here in the wild west of today, hard riding men still battle the open range for a living. Men like Jim Newton, owner of the Broken Wheel Ranch. He's sure full of fire and fury. What are you going to name him? I think you just saved me the trouble. Fury. 
You ever been in a cockpit before? No, sir. I've never been up in a plane before. Have you ever seen a grown man naked? I've met Peter's wife one time. <laughs> and it was at the screening of Airplane. And we were sitting right in front of you and your wife. And how do you do? And it was very polite. And my guess is you hadn't shared the script with her. We sit down and the movie starts to play. And all of a sudden Peter says, hey, Joey, have you ever seen a grown man naked? <laughs> and there was a shriek that came from behind me. <laughs> that was the awesome. loudest I have ever heard anybody laugh at <laughs> a screen. Joey. Have you ever been in a, in a Turkish prison? Hey, there's Big Brother, yes. Uh, hi, I'm Peter Graves. We're watching this episode of Gunsmoke. I'm, uh, as some of you, most of you may know, uh, Big Jim Larnis's little brother. And uh, this is an episode called Witch Doctor, which I directed. CBS oh, seemed to like idea. the job that I had done on the Gunsmoke. And so they uh, talked to my agent about having me a, giving me a commitment for the next season for to do, to direct a half a dozen episodes. And that would have been just fine with me, but it was about that day that I got a phone call in the evening from CBS saying, we want you to do a show that we have called Mission Impossible. And uh, that took care of the directing, I thought, for a while, but it seems to have taken care of it for longer than that. Hello, I'm Peter Graves. <laughs> Welcome to the world of Discover. So well-known fact that a man is more attractive with each passing year, more and more attractive than the girls react. That's a well-known fact. Colonel. So, uh, is that the lady you told me you were going to meet? The one who lost her son? Yes, it is. Well, you could have told me he was her husband, and I'd have believed it. Well, I put on some tangerine lip gloss and answered the door. Geico service turned out to be the best birthday present I could ever want. I was one lucky woman. Yeah, I have to ask you about the kiss that Simon gave you last week. Now, I know, I, I know Simon. Did he... You know, trying to slip you the tongue, did that happen? No. I was one lucky woman. <laughs> now, Lakeisha, thank you. You'll be able to see Lakeisha on our American Idol tour this summer. She's going on tour this summer. Hey, Jay, yeah. uh, before we go, yeah? it's just something I have to ask you. Sure, sure. Do you like movies about gladiators? <laughs> Lakeisha Jones, Peter yeah. Graves, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, thank you. Well, everybody got to love that tape scene at the beginning of the show where you listen to the, to the tape and get the message. And then ever afterward, when you went to, um, oh, a charity dinner or a luncheon or something like that, the dinner chairman or the luncheon guy was in charge of that would come up to you and say, I got a wonderful way to introduce you. See, I got this tape recorder, and uh, I've got, and, and he would think that he was the only guy who ever thought of it, you know. And so you'd do that, you'd listen to a tape, and they'd blow a little smoke up, and on you'd go. It has become, I think, a source of great pride to me to be a part of a business that I love. The whole idea of making films and television is the greatest thing in the world. As long as there's a part out there for an old bearded, wrinkled man or something, I'll be, I'll be there, yeah. For a and &E, I'm Peter Graves. Thanks for watching. Yes, indeed, I'd rather leave.